Yo, it's Elliot Hulse here, and during the 2015 Shrimp Camp Challenge, I had the good fortune to sit down and speak with some of the most entertaining, influential, and legendary kings and queens in the modern fitness era. These conversations are very informative, but relaxed and spontaneous, so I think you'll enjoy this experience. Your amazing fans want to know, do you count your macros in your eating phase? Okay, okay, so I think essentially what he's asking is, because I, I, you know, I push my first meal later into the day, I don't do breakfast, I fast, do I count my macros when I do eat? And I used to be very strict counting my macros, measuring the proteins, fats, and carbs, but um, eventually, because that's like, the, for me, what I, what I teach is like, the main driver of fat loss is that calorie deficit, creating the calorie deficit, you want to make it as enjoyable as possible. But once you once you get in the flow of you you know eating, measuring things out, I think it's way better to eyeball it. So you're not chained to like you know your phone measuring everything you put into your body. Mm -hmm. In fact, what I actually found was that when I was too absorbed with tracking everything, it made it harder. I would screw up more. Mm -hmm. I would because I'm the worst dieter in the world. It's like freaking. It's amazing that I'm under 10% body fat because I like food more than anyone I know. Um, but when I was tracking everything compulsively, it actually would deplete more willpower. I'd think about eating more, and then it was harder to kind of eat that deficit, which is something that I've been really trying to master, you know, staying lean. And, you know, I don't eat 3,000 calories a day. That's, like, more in periods when I'm trying to, like, like um, maintenance periods to kind of bring up my metabolism and take a break away from lower calories. Um, but so I kind of track, but I kind of don't track. I kind of ballpark it, if you will. Like, if we're going out for dinner later, I'm going to order a pound of steak and some french fries, and I have an idea of what I'm taking in, but also, like, my thing is, you got to find a way to be satisfied on your diet, because we only have so much willpower. So if you're trying to get down to 6% body fat, and it's tough, and you're just grinding it, and, like, you're going to bed hungry, I'm like, dude, enjoy life. If getting lean means you're losing your sanity, then what's the point? Right. That's, that's kind of my motif. Yeah. What about people who say, yeah, genetics? Genetics. It's almost one of those words that's like a, a stain on you. Like, well, yeah, he's got genetics. Because people will use anything to right. create disdain. Yeah. That's really what it is. It's sour fucking grapes. But, you know, they might throw some at you like, I yeah, mean, of it, course, because you're, you got a genetic predisposition. Or you're young. Or you got it easy. Yes, it's very true. Certain types have... Uh, have a much easier time staying lean. They're much more leptin sensitive. When they overeat, their appetite's diminished. They stop thinking about food. They start to move more. Um, I was that type until I was 18. And then I put on 20 pounds in a year. And then when I started to get lean, I had periods where I was trying to diet, trying to stick to that rigid diet, you know, small meals, clean eating. I couldn't do it. I was gaining weight trying to diet because it was too hard. And then when you feel guilty, when you mess up your diet, then that guilt triggers overeating. I had a hard time getting lean. The only reason I was creating my system was because was, I was so passionate. I wanted to figure it out. Um, but dude, like, <laughs> I, it, like, I'm not the guy that kind of just stays lean. E now I do. Now I stay lean so easily. But one thing is people will see me, you know, enjoying chocolate and french fries. Like, oh, I could do that when I was 24. I'm like, dude, I could eat super clean and get fat as shit. I just work it into my diet so I'm so satisfied on a low calorie intake. What is your morning ritual, and how do you wake up motivated each and every day? Dude, I don't even want to share my morning ritual. It's, it, it, too, it's too much. No, it's too much for the video. It's like, I mean, people have their morning rituals where they, you know, they, they do the meditation, the goal setting. And actually, I do a lot of goal setting, but, but not usually in the morning. My morning ritual is, like, the part of the reason I love what I do is because I can sleep in. Except for today, no sleeping. But I mean, I can sleep in. I, I just I just like to work from my bed, and um, I don't have like a a specific morning ritual. It, one period not too long ago, I was like going through some stuff. And I was trying to like really like get all my game because I was like had all these distractions. And what I was doing for a period of about three months was every morning I was listening to Eckhart Tolle, Power of Now and New Earth. I was learning to become present because a lot of times these thoughts that you have can. Um, take you over. If you keep telling yourself, you know, you're not good enough, um, I mean that, and so the problem is people are too identified with their thoughts, they can't break free and become the person they want because they're trapped in their current identity. 
So I was actually, for a period of about three months, I was going through a lot of totally, and I became present, kind of opened the door to kind of go after the person I wanted to be without being chained to my past identity. Um, so that was really powerful, but I did it for three months, and then I had like the freedom to kind of move in the way I wanted to, because I wasn't chained to any past um, beliefs. But that was my morning, morning rit ritual, was listening to totally. Yeah, cool. That is some deep yeah. shit what you just said there. <laughs> and I don't even know if people, like you said, can receive what you just said yeah. because it's that it's that powerful man you basically over the period of three months decided to transform yourself exactly i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna brainwash myself that's what i call it because i've listened to lots of brilliant people and i'm straight up brainwashing myself with this dude's genius and totally was that guy for you because you know what i think a lot of people face this but so much of our life is becoming and attaining and in that, a lot of times there's the message that we send ourselves that, you know what, I'm not good enough now. I have to have my business at this level to be happy, to be enough. I have to get my body a certain way to be happy, to be enough. I have to have this girlfriend, this car. And it's awesome to have goals. I'm like one of the most goal-driven people I know, but you can't have goals to make you happy because then that whole journey is meaningless. Now you're unhappy during the entire process. Right. And that was my fucking life just this perpetual cycle of going after stuff but always telling myself I'm not good enough now and eventually like it's like it becomes too much and so what totally did for me is he taught me to kind of go after my goals but be able to like never forget all we have is this moment so if I'm not enjoying this moment then fucking the goal means shit yep so I mean that's kind of it, it helped me with a lot of things and that actually that mentality was allowed me to finally get to the the goal I had for, with my body to get to a certain body fat level was because when I was obs chronically obsessing about it, I'd overthink it, you know, I, I, I would build, burn all this willpower, I'd overeat, and then it was just this perpetual cycle. Have you ever read the Bhagavad Gita? No. So a lot of Western ideas, obviously, you know, Tolly is a guy of Western ideas, comes from this idea of detachment, not being caught up in the karma. And uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna comes to Arjuna to teach him a lesson. Arjuna, by the way, is a warrior who's going to battle against his own family. There's a, there was a rift in the family. He loves his grandparents on both sides and he's being sent to de basically defend himself. And, uh, and Krishna comes to him to offer him advice about this woe that he feels for the terrible thing that's about to happen. And he teaches him a series of lessons. Number one, one of the lessons is to give all of your efforts, to go hard, to strive for your achievement of the goal, but be completely detached for the outcome. Go hard in the moment, but let it go. And that's what I heard you just so wisely describe as your story. Yeah. So it's amazing how these things are, you know, they're metaphors, and, they're stories. I just read that. And, and huh? dude, yesterday, that's what you said. And dude, that's powerful for lifting, because. I mean, you probably see this with some people. If they're too dependent on like hitting that personal record, mm -hmm. it like it it changes them. Like sometimes your best workouts are the ones where you're kind of hungover, mm -hmm. kind of off your game yeah. because there's no outcome. You're like, you like, don't if, care. You don't care, and so like that translates to everything. Mm -hmm. um, totally. Yeah, man. Powerful sort of like dichotomy. It's almost like a uh, a contradiction. You know, yeah. what do I get up for every single day if I'm not a I'm not attached to the outcome. Right. Get up every single day because of the process, because it's so good to do this thing this day. And whatever comes the next day, it'll be good to do it then too. What a beautiful conversation, dog. I know. I appreciate I'm it. loving it. Dude. Yeah, thanks for coming. Dude, I'm happy to be here, yeah. Yep. And that was a fun talk. Yeah.